Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about writing equations in two variables. So, an equation in two variables represents two quantities that change in relationship to one another. Um, a solution of an equation has two variables, that has two variables, is uh, an ordered pair that makes the equation true. You have an input, or an x variable, and that's the independent variable, and you have an output, or a y variable, that is the dependent variable. So, this is an example right here, y equals 2x, okay? Uh, here is my independent variable, x, that's my input, and then my dependent variable is the y, that's my output. So the question is, is this ordered pair, which is always x, y, the x always comes first, is that a solution to the equation? So what I would do to check that is I would take the x-coordinate and I would put it in for x, and then I would take the y-coordinate and put it in for y and see if this is a true statement. So this would say that 6 is equal to 2 times 3. And yes, that is true because that would be 6 equals 6. So this implies um, 3, 6 is a solution. Okay, now over here, we've got another equation. Here's my input, my independent variable. That in this case is four. And then here's my dependent variable, y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the x and put it in here. I'm gonna take the y and I'm gonna put it in over here. And I get 12 equals four times four minus three. So 12 would equal 16 minus three. So 12 would equal 13. Okay, then we know that that's not true. So this implies that 4, 12 is not a solution. Okay. Um, should actually be 4, 13 would be the solution. Alrighty then. So the equation y equals 128 minus 8x gives the amount y in fluid ounces of milk remaining in a gallon jug after you pour x cups. Okay, so here's the deal. A gallon has 128 fluid ounces in it. And a cup has 8 fluid ounces in it. So every cup that you take would subtract 8 ounces from this. Okay, so we're going to identify the dependent and independent variables. So the the dependent, that's the output. So that's going to be the y. And the independent, that's going to be your x, okay? And that's going to be how many cups we're going to <coughs> remove from the gallon jug. How much milk remains in the jug after you pour 10 cups? Okay, so that's easy. So what we would do then is we would plug in to the equation, we'd plug 10 in. Okay, so then y would be 128 minus 80. So y would be 48. Okay, so um, that would be 48 and that would be ounces. Uh, fluid ounces. Be careful because fluid ounces and ounces are not exactly the same thing. So fluid ounces. Okay. So now you solve these. Tell me if uh, this solution, this ordered pair right here, is a solution to the uh, equation. So I'll let you pause the video and then crank these out real quick and see if you get the right answer. Okay, so we're going to take the x, we're going to plug the x in here, we're going to take the y, we're going to plug the y in here, so 21 would equal 7 times 2, or 21 would equal 14. Well, that's certainly not true. So that implies that 2, 21 is not a solution. Okay.
So that was pretty simple. Now over here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the um, 16 and plug it in for y. And we're going to take the 3 and plug it in for x. So we're going to get 16 equals 5 times 3 plus 1, or 16 equals 15 plus 1. So 16 equals 16. Ah, that's true. So that implies that 3, 16 is a solution. So hopefully you got both those right. Okay, you can use tables and graphs to represent equations in two variables. So the table and graph below represent the equation y equals x plus 2. So you can see here's my x's. So if I take uh, the x and I, plug, I add 2 to it, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5. So here's my ordered pairs, 1, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 5. I can also show that on a graph. So here's 1, 3 is on the line. Okay, and 2, 4 is, is there. And 3, 5 is there. So I have three points. They all form a straight line. I can connect them all together like this. And any point on that graph, or on, that, on the graph of that line, would be an ordered pair here. So I could go out here to 6, and I could go see, oh, 6, 8 would be on here and here would be my input would be six and my output would be eight. Okay, an athlete burns 200 calories weightlifting. The athlete, <coughs> excuse me, then works out on an elliptical trainer and burns 10 calories for every minute. Write and graph an equation in two variables that represents the total number of calories burned during the workout. Okay, so so the number of calories is going to be my y. That's going to be my dependent variable. And he burned 200 calories weightlifting right off the bat. So 200 plus he's burning 10 calories for every minute. Okay, so let's use x for minutes. Okay, so there is my equation. Okay, so at zero minutes, he's already done his weightlifting. That's going to be right there, 0, 200. And then in 20 minutes, if I plug 20 in here, I get 10 times 20 plus uh, 200. 10 times 20 would be 200, so this would be 200 plus 200 would be 400. So in 20 minutes, he had burned a total of 400 calories. Okay, now I can't tell if this is a line yet. This is linear because I only have two points. I really need at least a third one. So I could go out here to, I could put 40 in here. So let's do that in a different color. So then that would be um, 200 plus 10 times 40 minutes. Well, that's going to be 400 plus 200 is going to be 600. So in 40 minutes, he did 600. Okay, so you can see that's that's linear right there. That's a nice straight line. Okay, so I can go ahead and connect all of those. And now I've got a line. And I can quickly go say, oh, uh, what about 50 minutes? Oh, it would be right here. That would be 700 calories. Uh-oh, I moved it. Ah do that. Anyway, uh, let's see here. There we go. So in 50 minutes, that would be right here. Oh, that would be right here. That'd be 700. And I can check on a graph really quickly how many, how many um, calories I would burn. Okay. So theorem. This is really important theorem. Distance equals rate times time, or d equals r times t. I would know that if I were you. A train averages 40 miles per hour between two cities. That's the rate, okay? 40 miles per hour. 
um, use a graph to show the relationship between the time and the distance traveled. Okay, so if uh, the rate is 40, I can plug 40 in for r, and I would get the equation, the distance is going to be 40 times the time, and that time is going to be in hours. So the time, t is in hours. Okay, so that'll tell me the distance. So in one hour, I plug in one, I'm gonna get one times 40 is 40. In two hours, I plug in two, two times 40 is 80. In four hours, four times 40 would be 160 and so on. So you get this nice little graph over here. Okay, that would be one way that I could do that. Um, use an equation and two variables. Oh, well, that's pretty much what I did right here. I just shortcutted it. So d equals rt, r is 40, I can plug that in, and there's my equation, d equals 40 times t. Okay, so you're going to get to do problems 1 through 43 odd in this lesson, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.